So it started off with this picture here that shows a very unique um, the structures of the three-dimensional structures of the antigen and the antibodies. This white parts of the antigens that are going to be compatible, complementary with the antigen binding sites of the antibodies. This shows all the different loops of the hypervariable domains on the antibody, but just the the amount of massive amount of, of structures that we have on the cell surface of any pathogen um, that can be reactive sites for these antibodies to bind to. Okay, so there's two types of, of epitopes or, or antigen uh, determinants. Um, these can be multivalent antigen with multiple different epitopes. So basically we have different parts that we can bind to or that we can have multivalent antigens with the repeated with all of the same epitopes. There's also linear and discontinuous uh, epitopes. Uh, so antigenic epitopes can be continuous or discontinuous. Continuous or linear epitopes are part of the continuous amino acid sequence. Um, this is really helpful for antibodies that are going to recognize, obviously, the linear primary level structure of it, of an ADA protein, and they're going to bind to, uh, for example, synthetic peptides um, in, 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 a, uh, in a test tube or something along those lines. Whereas discontinuous uh, or conformational epitopes are what we see over here. This is a three-dimensional folded, and it's only going to bind to specific parts of it. Um, so this would be, I guess if we are just showing this would be the primary structure and this would be the tertiary structure of that. So that's really it for that. The only thing that I have to do now would be to actually map this out. So we have epitopes, sometimes called antigenic determinants. Um, this is where antibodies are going to bind. This generally, for the most part, um, the two structures that we have are going to be carbohydrates, sugars, and then proteins. Not really so much lipids on their own because lipids, as you can imagine, are hydrophobic. Uh, they're not something that you're going to see on the surface um, of these. So there is a lot of different various ways that we can do this. But for the most part, we have multivalent. And there's two ways that we can have multivalent. We can have ones that have different. I just classify that the multi part, the many many different epitopes, many different parts on the surface of it that it's going to bind to, and then there's also ones that have many of the same or similar epitopes. This video is going to take like three seconds, but anyways. There's also, I'll switch to gold I guess, those that are sometimes known as linear epitopes. Um, and these are going to be stuff that binds to the primary, or a part of, I should probably clarify that this is a, binds to part of the primary amino acid sequence. The actual amino acids would be the linear. Um, the other one, which I'll do in blue here, would be discontinuous epitopes. This is the tertiary level amino acid, or you could even think about it as the peptide, um, folded into that. Um, and then the only thing that I really wanted to say that's important about this is that there is a lot of variation between the different types of epitopes that we can have.